Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Cafe with Gary in our newly renovated kitchen studio. To celebrate, today we're going to make Persian bad kebab, arguably the fanciest kebab in our menu. All right, let's get started making our kebab bag. First thing we do, we're gonna make a couple of things with onions. I have one and a half medium onions. The recipe calls for one large onion. I had smaller onions, but that's okay. I just roughly chopped them into pieces and we're going to pulverize these onions the onion juice we extract here is going to be used for a simple marinade that we're going to apply to our meat. So I simply pulse this a few times and then I have this cheesecloth. You can use a sieve or any kind of uh, mechanism to extract the juice from these and just simply Put these shredded onions into the cheesecloth. We're going to extract, squeeze the juice out of this. Okay, that ought to do it. I think that's enough onion juice. Yes, I know I'm going to get some comments under this video. What do you do with the shredded onion flakes um, that come out of this process? I throw them away because I don't have any plans to cook anything or use them uh, anytime soon. But absolutely, you can use it in your soups, in your uh, horeshes, you know, any horesh that calls for uh, minced or chopped onions, you can use these uh, in that horesh. Or if you make some sort of salad, absolutely put it in your tzatziki or mastochiar, if you like onion in it, instead of garlic maybe. Yeah, you can use this for a lot of things, but I'm gonna throw them away now. So we have our onion juice here, and we're going to proceed to add the rest of the ingredients. I have some vegetable oil, I use grapeseed. This is any kind of acid, you can use fresh squeezed lime juice, I use verjus, which is a gra um, sour grape juice. I really love it. Or you can do half and half. That's a good combination too. This is our saffron solution. It's in the recipe. This is your salt, your freshly ground black pepper. You can use white pepper if you have it. Now we need a whisk or a fork, as it happens to be in this case right here. So this Onion juice solution has two purposes. One is obviously a marinade that will brush onto the kebab before we grill it. Second is because for your board and your kebab, when you're working it, putting it on skewer, you need some liquid. A lot of people use water. We're gonna use this solution for that purpose. All right, this is the second half of our onions. In this case, one, one and a half medium onions. We're going to cut them into thin strips. You can do it one of many ways. You can do it this way from the top. This is about what you're going for, right? The other way you can do your onions is um, a cut they call Leonese cut. You just go from this side and come up and then go from the other side. That's what you get, as you can see. So you're gonna take these apart. Now I'm going to transfer the sliced onions to the bowl. Now you know what salt does with vegetables and just about any kind of food that you put it in contact with? Salt extracts liquids from vegetables, right? So I have about half teaspoon of salt. This is not for flavor in your onion or the meat that we're gonna to add to it. It's just to extract the juice of these onions. What I'm gonna do is, and you wanna wear gloves obviously because you're gonna be squeezing the onion. I am going to squeeze and turn like this. We do the same thing when we make chenjie, okay? 
So about a minute of this will kind of adhere the salt to all these onion slices. And what you get is an almost, I'm gonna say oily, although, although I know onion doesn't have any oil, it's just a liquid coming. But the feel of this liquid is almost like some sort of essence or oil that's coming out of onions. This is the best way to marinate with onions. All right. So now we're going to talk about the meat. Kebab bag is originally made with lamb tenderloin, or as they call it in uh, Britain, Australia, and other Commonwealth countries, lamb backstrap is what it's called. But, um, but here in the US, they call it lamb tenderloin. I personally don't care um, for the smell of lamb. Most lamb have a weird gainy smell to me. So I go for young um, beef. Um, and, and beef tenderloin is also pricey here, but, but seems to fit the bill really well to make kebab a bag. I got these two pieces. One is larger, one is smaller. Four are bag kebab. This is a total of about 3.2 pounds. Uh, about 1,500 grams, one and a half kilos. And so we're gonna butterfly them. Um, regardless of whether you get sirloin or tenderloin, the purpose is to open this like a book, as they call it, butterfly, and then get it down to about a quarter inch of thickness. Depending on how the shape of this thing is, you decide where you want to start your cutting. By the way, you can see I'm using a Japanese sushi knife because of how, dand how long it is and how dandy. This is a recent addition to my kitchen studio. Thank you to Mrs. Cafe Bagheri that gave me that. I used to use the, sh the chef's knife, but I'm using this now. And truth be told, I've never done this. First time on camera, I'm using the chef's knife here. So I've decided this, see this opening right here on the side? This is where I want to open it up. So I start from here and go like that, and then push this down on the board. And you see, you see the distance here? And then go a little closer to the side of the board um, so that you have more control on the handle. There you go. Here. And then you go like this. And depending on the Overall shape, you may end up with imperfections on two sides. Don't worry about that, you will see why. When we start pounding and tenderizing the meat. Okay, pull this back here. Look at that, see, about a quarter of an inch, a little more here, a little less there, that's okay. See, I'm keeping an eye on the distance between the knife and the board as I unroll the tenderloin on this side. Look at that. This is the, the, the general technique. And if you end up with some holes because you had an imperfection in the shape of the original uh, tenderloin, that's okay. And I'm gonna butterfly this one the same way, put it closer to the board. So these butterfly pieces of tenderloin now are gonna have a chance to marinate in the onion. And this is gonna marinate in the refrigerator somewhere between three hours to 24 hours. So if we have time later today, we're gonna make and film the grilling of the kebab. Otherwise it's gonna be tomorrow. Now in the meantime, while our 
back on the skewer is marinated in there, we're gonna make our basting sauce. And I'll, you can do that in the microwave or you can do it on a cooktop. We're gonna do it on low to medium fire on this cooktop here. We start with a couple of tablespoons of butter. We have our saffron solution. You know how to make that with ice or with hot water. It's in the recipe. We put some salt and some fresh ground pepper. But the only other thing that is going to be in this basting sauce is going to be some acid. Fresh squeezed lime juice, lemon juice works. I like uh, sour grape juice, abhure as Persians call it. And French call this verjus. Um, it's V-E-R and juice. So uh, I recommend this for all of your marinations for juje kebab, for different kebabs. And also any kind of sauce or basting sauce that, that you, you want to use lime juice or lemon juice, consider using sour grape juice or mix sour grape and lime juice. That, that's a good combination. One trick about using lime, sour, sour grape, or lemon juice, you don't want it to boil. Don't ever put your um, sour um, fruit juices um, in, in your sauce and then leave it to boil. It's gonna make it bitter. So you, mi you mix your butter, saffron, um, spices, whatever you have, and once your sauce is done and distributed completely, you just turn off the heat and put your sour grape or your lime juice. We are almost there. There it is. See, it started boiling, we're done. And we're gonna put our Always shake it because it settles the sediments at the bottom. There. You're ready to go for this. Our meat had a chance to marinate in the onions. Um, remember we had butterfly these steaks and oh, they're so aromatic, ready to work on them. So you separate the onion flakes, onion pieces from the meat, one by one, and take them out. Uh, we're done with that onion. And again, as I told you, with the onion that we squeeze the juice from, I don't use them for anything. I guess you can put it in soups or whatever. But uh, here it is. So we work on these one at a time and so we're gonna put them on skewers one at a time, but we have to tenderize them, bring them to the side of the board closest to you so that you can have control over the knife handle and have clearance down here. We're going to tenderize these steaks with the back of the knife. The purpose is to put gashes mainly, remember this is already a tender piece of meat, we're going to put cuts in the meat so that when they're served on the plate, they're easy to eat with. You don't need a knife for this. You just use your fork and spoon. And spoon usually at a Persian table is for the rice, right? You use your fork for the steak. Here, we ex expand it as far as we can and then go to town with the back of the knife. Uh, listen to the noise. If you're hearing thumps, kind of muffled thumps, like this, you're not hitting it hard enough. You need to reach past the meat and hit the board. That's the key. So you have to have a firm grip of the knife. You don't want to lose control. It can be dangerous. Otherwise, there's nothing to it. So look at this now. This is what we were going for, right? See, you can see that it kind of reached the other side. 
this is the state we wanted it at, okay? So let's put this here and bring the other ones. I want to tenderize all of them. Then we get the onion off of it. You know, so sometimes when you take this out of uh, the onion, you see this is too thick right now. So I can give this one more unfold right here like this. See that? That was a little too thick. And so I can make a butterfly further. All right. So now we're going to start putting these on skewers. One thing I want to tell you about, use these half inch skewers, uh, about one point something centimeters. Uh, make sure that the, the tip of the skewers, when you buy them from store, usually I buy these from Mediterranean Persian markets, um, they come like this, see, I haven't, sharpened this one since I bought it from store. And I, I kept this to, for comparison. See these two are sharpened after I bought them from the store, use an angle grinder or some sort of file to sharpen both ends. So the, the, the tip of it is sharp and it penetrates the meat easily. For all your kebabs, chenje and bag, especially this one, when it was bought from store, it was like this. Because of the uh, legal liability in customers hurting themselves, they ship and sell all skewers like this, kind of dull. But you always, 100% of the times, you have to sharpen your skewers for kebabs and meats and anything that you grill. So what we need to do is now kind of turn the meat. Remember when I was tenderizing there this way, along the grain of the steak. Now I'm going to turn it. Now it's sitting perfect. The lines are perpendicular to my knife and they're this way and I can run the skewer in there. The traditional shape of a bag kebab on the skewer is like a um, cone shape, almost like a Christmas tree, like a pine tree going from the base, getting smaller at the top. So what we want to do is we want to start at the base with the largest size. It's usually about four, the width of four fingers on average hand. So we're thinking, I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna cut this in three parts so I can work with it. See, now I've got three pieces there. So I start from the first one, four fingers right here. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of angle because I'm aiming for this line to come up and make a pine tree shape. Look at that. So now that's one. The next piece is going to be a little smaller. See what I'm doing? And then The next one, and of course, here. The last piece. And I will use these to construct the, the, the next kebab skewers. Now I'm gonna start from this end. You have to use the help of your non-dominant, so you're holding the skewer with your dominant hand, left or right, whichever it is in your case, and you're gonna feel the tip of the skewer, make sure it's in the middle so that it is holding your kebab, right? See, I'm going piece by piece through here. Sometimes you have to use two fingers to lift the meat like this so that the skewer tip can find it and penetrate, right there. See what happened here? See, so the skewer is firmly in the middle of the thin sheet of steak and holding them. 
because these pieces are now mostly separated and they're held together by a little connective tissue between these lines. There. So we continue going through these pieces. And remember these are three, four separate pieces. You could do this, leave that there and then go back to it when you, when you reach there. Here, look, see that one needs a little help. I'm gonna pull it back out and make sure. There. And then you, in order to make this part of the job easier, your board has to be wet. I use the onion marinade that I made earlier to wet the board and the steak itself. That way you press on it and it helps you see where everything is. We go to the last part to complete this shape that we're going for. So. There we are. And then use your knife to kind of trim. This is strictly for the looks. Yeah, this part is just for the aesthetics. You want your kebab to look trimmed and manicured, if you will. This is what we're going for, right? Okay, so, and then you want like, maybe two, two and a half, three inches of clearance at the top so that your, um, your kebab can be, oh, by the way, um, you need to know, like I've said with all the kebab recipes, you need to know the, the effective heat zone in your, uh, on your um, grill. So you have to test and know where the hottest part of the grill is that's the, the back edge of your grill and this is the front. So once you measure that and, and determine for all your kebabs, you need to have a little bit of clearance at the, top, at the back and then your kebab needs to be over the hottest part of your um, grill where the fire is, right? So that's what I'm going for. So we did one, the traditional shape I wanted to show you. And this is also one that's kind of over the top and extra wide and a lot of people make this and it makes a really strong presentation and makes your kebab look a lot bigger. It's kind of rectangular and extra wide. It's not this shape. I'm going to show you one of those. Okay. You see these extra pieces that are not wide enough? What I do is I usually make small pieces of bag um, with, with smaller width. And so that would be just for a person who doesn't eat much. So we make these big ones and then we have these other skewers that have less, less meat on them. So let's do one more piece for this guy over here. This is how I do it. Okay, we're gonna trim this one just the same. Make sure it looks pretty. Just again, just for the aesthetics. And uh, not to worry, these little pieces and trims that come off of this kebab, this is tenderloin meat. I'm not gonna waste them. They're good for lubia polo or tomorrow morning's um, breakfast with some eggs. And you just fry them and with some eggs and some potatoes. There you go. This is the second kind. I've done the two skewers that we're gonna eat tonight. So the meat had 
marinate it in onion for several hours. The next thing we put on it, because remember we haven't put any kind of spice or seasoning on our meat. The last thing we do, the marinade that we made with onion juice, saffron, and spices, we're gonna give a generous coating of this marinade on both sides of our bar skewers. In restaurants, in Persian restaurants, what they do is an alternative to brushing this marinade over your kebab is they have these pans, not unlike this one, and it's got a, um, it's filled with this marinade, you know, a variation of the onion juice and saffron is usually the dominant ingredient in there. And then what they do is they just sit, sit the kebab, the skewer in that solution like this and take it out and it's ready to go. All right, and if you like, you can put some of it on your tomatoes. Goes real well. Now we're going to leave the bar kebab and tomatoes can go in there as well, in the refrigerator for at least an hour for this marinade to go to work. Um, of course, you don't want to leave the meat out in the open. What we do, in the restaurants, they have huge display refrigerators that have room to fit the skewers and the meat and your pan. At home, it's a little harder. What you do is you just clear one of the shelves in your refrigerator. You have to just move things around. As you can see, we've done that. And we're gonna leave these uh, skewers here for one hour. Then we'll come out and grill some kebab bag. Okay, we're outside. Nice um, fall afternoon in Dallas, Texas, and we're gonna have Persian bag kebab. Yeah, I, I just uh, skewered two uh, for our dinner tonight, uh, the two different kinds that we showed you. We're having some sangak bread under the kebab, and I have a couple of pieces to help me get them off the skewer and kind of put them in place without burning my hands. You can do it with paper towel, but bread is preferred. I have the Roma tomatoes. We're having grilled tomatoes with this kebab. I did not make um, any rice today. We're gonna have kebab and flatbread with some grilled tomatoes. Make little sandwiches and eat them. It's gonna be awesome. This is the basting sauce that you saw me make. I'm slightly, because it was sitting in the kitchen and uh, it kind of congealed because it's cold. Um, I'm just kind of getting it back to life without boiling it. Remember, anything with acid, uh, sour grape, lemon lime, you don't want it to boil because it gets a little bitter. So just here, it's just liquid and back to life. So we're gonna put it aside here and it's ready to go. Our kebabs in there. One thing to note, because these bag, bag means leaf in Farsi, right? These, um, these flat sheets of meat are really limp. As you can see, the gravity is pulling them down. Watch this, they get, they get firm as they cook and they're gonna straighten out and it's gonna take care of itself. So I wouldn't worry about it. The tomato went on a few minutes early because it takes a little longer to fully cook. I love those grilled tomatoes, they're wonderful. Um, so we're gonna close this and just give it about a minute or so, and then we're gonna turn. Here, another minute, and we're gonna turn it again. As you can see, this keeps cooking, and, and every time I just turn my tomatoes, the thing about grilled tomatoes, every person likes them at different level of, of doneness. Some people like it completely burned on, on the surface, but as long as the inside is cooked and hot. Um, now, some restaurants, some chefs, in order to make the presentation better, 
they do these in oven in, in large pans and then they, when they're serving putting it out um, on the plate to the diner they have a torch going over the top and reverse searing if you will the same concept and giving it a char on the on the outside but but with a little bit of salt and pepper, the grilled tomato is the best side dish for anything. So now we're, we're working towards the look and the char that we want on the kebab because you can't go wrong with this meat. I mean, I personally like uh, fillets and you know any kind of cut of tenderloin. I like it at uh, medium rare. So we're very close to that already. Okay, so check this out. We're a couple of minutes before this thing is ready to come off the skewer and be served. This is the butter saffron based um, basting sauce that we were making earlier. So I'm gonna start basting it about a couple of minutes before it's ready. It helps, the butter in the sauce helps the color and char that we're looking for and the flavor and it prevents it from getting dry towards the end. And of course that little saffron hue helps the look of it. There is a question of how done bad kebab needs to be. If your guests are Persians, Iranians, they want it completely well done, both with chicken and with the beef. Usually the, the, the preference, um, the old school way, is to cook it all the way before burning it. But I personally, and those of us who lived in the Western world, are more likely to like it medium rare, rare, and less than fully done. So just what you can do is if you're doing one skewer per person, uh, do what you do with hamburgers and steaks. Ask everybody how well done they want the, their steak bar kebab and just proceed accordingly, okay? All right, I don't want to burn my hand, so we're going to Get these off, get the big one first. So you decide which side is the presentation side, right? And what I would do is kind of release the front and then hold the kebab and, and pull out the skewer. you get this one the same. Get the front released. Isn't that beautiful, look at this. That's a typical bag kebab. So I'm gonna bring this guy over to kind of sit here. We're gonna clean our plate a little bit before we bring the tomatoes. I remember you would have a large um, serving plate. If it's family style, all of the bags coming off a skewer will be in one large presentation plate, have rice and salad and everything. And then put a couple here and a couple here. And that's what we're talking about there. There you have it. This is your kebabe bag. Very fine steak. Um, very little interference in the way of 
spices and heavy marinades. Really onions, the, the biggest thing here at play. And you give it 10, 15 minutes like any steak meat and then go to town. I would serve this usually with Persian saffron rice with the crunchy tadig at the bottom of the pot as the tradition is, and that goes really well. But th because this is such a uh, tender cut of meat, you can make little sandwiches with your favorite flatbread. A little um, crunchy salad or turshi, pickled vegetables on the side always goes well. And any other kind of size, grilled vegetables, starting with grilled tomato, of course, is always a great thing to go with any kebab. And there it is, your kebab it back. Thank you for being with me today. If you liked what you saw today, please like this video below. I appreciate it if you share this video on your social media, Facebook, Instagram, and tell your friends and family. And uh, I know you're a subscriber. In case you're not, this is a perfect opportunity to subscribe and hit that little bell button so we can keep in touch and you get notified when things happen here. Thank you for being here. Um, usually I taste my food at the end of the video, but I'm gonna wait and go inside with some maybe cold beer or, or wonderful red wine. This just fits the bill. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you soon right here at Cafe Bagheri.